Okay, to keep going with these uh, corollaries and lemmas and whatnot about well-ordered sets, uh, we will show that the only automorphism of a well-ordered set is the identity, right? If it maps to itself and is an isomorphism, there is just one such thing, and it is only the identity. Uh, of course, it's trivial that the identity is uh, an automorphism. That always is true. I, I don't think there's any uh, topic of math in, in mathematics where anything that we would call a, a, uh, an automorphism wouldn't permit the identity to be one. But anyway, so we have already shown that if you have a, um, a, a, an increasing function from a set to itself, then it must satisfy this in equation uh, because it is an isomorphism in this particular problem then also its inverse function satisfies that equation now we could use this to infer that x must be greater than or equal to f of x that's a familiar thing to do particularly with an increasing function in other uh, realms of mathematics but here it you know deserves at least a little bit of comment how does that follow from our formal definitions well if you break it into cases then equality follows just by using the uh, bijective property of the function uh, and then if it's uh, it, you know if it's a greater than symbol then that follows from the increasing property of the function so I won't belabor the point any more than that I think it's relatively clear uh, once you have this system of inequalities it just follows that f of x is equal to x okay on to the next corollary uh, uh, if you have two well-ordered sets that are isomorphic, then uh, the isomorphism must be unique. This follows quite nicely from the previous uh, uh, corollary. And, uh, but just to, I, I think the author doesn't even give the proof because it seems uh, probably a bit obvious, but I'll go ahead and give it just to make sure it's clear. Uh, take any two functions which both are isomorphisms from w1 to w2. Well, uh, because it is an isomorphism, then its inverse function is also an isomorphism. Uh, that might deserve a little bit of proof, but I think the proof should be easy. In any case, uh, from that point, we can compose the two isomorphisms. That composition now becomes an automorphism from w1 to w1, because of course, uh, F sends an element from W1 to W2, G inverse sends it back to W1. So we're now dealing with an automorphism from W1 to W1. Uh, now we've already proved that such an automorphism must be the identity, which I write here. And then you could just apply the function G to both sides of this equation, so to speak. I mean, you know, again, that step could deserve uh, a little bit more proof, but I think the proof is easy and anybody uh, watching this can manage it, so there you have it. The function f is equal to the function g. That is to say, uh, uh, you get uniqueness, right? Any two functions that match from w1 to w2 must be the same function, so there really is just one. Okay, 